Hey everybody, how's it going? I'd like to discuss a video that I did last week. If you're here because of the provocative title, please feel free to leave your hateful comment and move on. It's all money for me. It's all engagement, so I don't really care if you watch the entire video or you just leave some nasty shit in the comments. But I assure you that there is going to be a point to this video, a thesis to it, and something that I hope makes you think a little bit. So I did this video called New York Will Bankrupt Anyone Stupid Enough to Stay about two weeks ago. Now, as you can see, this video got over 120,000 views on this live channel. My main channel with over a million subscribers barely gets more than 30 or 40,000. This is my, my throwaway, my shitposting channel. And that video got over 100,000 views on a channel that usually gets like 500 or 1,000 views a video. And it's very interesting because what I've noticed in the past 10 years I've been on YouTube, the videos that perform the best on this platform are not the videos that my audience actually claims they want. It's not the board repairs or this, that, or the other. It's not the stuff people ask for. It's when people pile on with nasty comments because they've misconstrued something you've said. Or like you've said something that you may have not intended to trigger people, but it did, and everybody has to leave their own personal thought on how much they hate you or how, what they think of it in the comments. Those are the most profitable videos. Whether it was this why I don't use Apple products video that back in the day made it to two million views and my channel used to get 100 or 300 views a video, or this New York City homeless proof design good job video where most people are not responding to what I actually said in the video, they're responding to what I think I said, which pissed them off. And it is what it is. I've learned something. At the end of the day, in my 20s, try to change the world. In my 30s, if I can't beat them, join them, and above all, profit off of it. For all the virtue signaling they do about not liking hate speech, YouTube makes so much money off of hate speech. That's why videos get promoted by the algorithm that have all these horrible, nasty comments. And again, the, the videos I do that are promoted the most by the algorithm are the ones that have the nastiest, most vitriolic, shitty comment sections. They make money off of you guys arguing and leaving shit back and forth and throwing crap at each other. And yeah, what, what can I say? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to actually explain a little bit of my thesis that was the that I've kind of alluded to with my very provocative title there, which is a newfound respect for liberals as a result of stupid conservative comments. This is probably going to tick a lot of people off, but I don't care because at this point you've ticked me off, and I'd like to explain my thesis. So. In this video, New York will bankrupt anyone stupid enough to stay, I was talking about one of many shitty New York policies, in my opinion, which is in order to pay back the interest and pay back a federal loan they took to be able to cover all the unemployment claims in 2020 as a result of their other shitty policy of willfully destroying their economy, they are going to be charging the business owners that stayed that didn't lay off their employees, that didn't fire people, that didn't draw from unemployment, more money to pay for that. And I just said again, you know, there are many examples on this channel of New York City trying to nickel and dime businesses, particularly mine, and I do document them on this channel. And I said, listen, I'm just, like, you know, enough is enough at one point. I'm just kind of sick and tired of this shit. And I just, I made a video on it. Now, what really interested me in this video was the comment section. The comment section on this video were filled with comments like, uh, idiot liberal leaves a blue state that he destroyed, moves to a red state. Take, keep your garbage liberal ideology in the state that you live in, and this, that, and the other. Now, what made this really strange for me is that I am a public figure. And it's fairly easy to kind of get an idea of what I think of my local New York City government. So again, I'll just leave a nice little selection over here. And again, this is just what I curated in like 15 seconds before doing this video. I'm sure I have many more videos on what I think of New York City government that might be able to give people a slight idea of where my political leanings lie. Hint. De Blasio, Cuomo, and AOC were not my chosen votes. And, the, and one, you know, one of the things that I find particularly interesting is that sometimes I'll take the bait and I'll comment and say, I'll just like list this list of videos and say, here are my thoughts on New York City governance. I've, l I've been registered to vote for 16 years. And for that 16 years that I have been registered to vote, zero of the candidates that I have voted for in New York State or New York City have ever won. And it's gotten to the point now where there's literally nobody to vote for because often there is just one party running for many city council seats. There's one party running for like, you know, s numerous different positions. So it's at a point where your, your only choice is like vote for somebody you don't want or don't vote at all. And I'll usually respond saying, this is what I think of my city government. I actually have videos where I was campaigning for Cuomo's challenger in 2018. I've interviewed Cuomo's challenger on this channel twice. I interviewed, um, I forget the name of a congressional person for the district that represents like the Wall Street area. His name is on the tip of my tongue. Nadler. I interviewed somebody who was running against Nadler in 2018. Um, it, sh it 
should be pretty obvious, again, where my political leanings tend to lie. Uh, you know, I, I am a person that believes in the Second Amendment. I'm a person that is for free speech to the point where I literally moved across the country to work for somebody that I was inspired by because he's actually putting his money where his mouth is and supporting free speech platforms and investing in them. I'm helping him build his mission. I do not believe that COVID shutdowns were a good thing, and I think that should be fairly obvious from my videos. I was not a fan of how the riots turned out in 2020. I'm the type of person that read basic economics in high school and said, hmm, that makes sense. I read Discrimination and Disparities by Thomas Sowell, and I go, huh, that makes sense. Uh, it, it's, it's, again, it should kind of be kind of obvious where my political leanings lie. And again, all this stuff is publicly available information. So what I find really interesting is when I leave a comment like, like this, and then every comment in the follow-up thread like this, there'll be 60 comments there, and they'll all be saying, liberal losers stay in your state. Douchebag, blue state, whatever, moves to red state just so that he can ruin it. And that's when it kind of finally hit me. This has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with politics at all. Because I probably would align with the person leaving that comment on probably 90 to 95 percent of the issues. Whereas my neighbors in New York City are probably most likely, I'm just going to take a wild guess, people that I would not align with on 95 to 99 percent of issues. You know, when I say something like, um, no, November 19th, that was my birthday. Kyle, when Kyle, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse being acquitted was my birthday present to see that the justice system prevailed or something like that. My more liberal or progressive neighbors in New York City would look at that and go, ugh. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that I've learned to respect about liberals and the respect that I lost for a lot of conservatives based on my experience over the past several weeks. Liberals will dislike me for who I am. Conservatives will dislike me for who I am not. Let me say that again. Liberals will dislike me because I think the Second Amendment is a good thing. Liberals will dislike me because I think COVID shutdowns were horrible and that freedom is paramount in our, in our philosophy. Liberals will dislike me because I won't mince words when saying that what happened on June 1st and 2nd of 2020 was a riot in many cases and that it was shameful the way many governments uh, dealt with that and the destruction of many of the small businesses at the time. They will dislike me because of a philosophical difference, but they understand, they'll take the time to understand what my philosoph philosophy is. When I'm reading Discrimination and Disparities by Thomas Sowell in the subway, and I get side eye from somebody that's probably taking some sociology course at a, at a local college, their side eye is because of the title of the book that I'm reading. There's a fundamental disagreement in philosophy there. I can respect that. What I have little to no respect for is when I'll see, like, I'll actually comment, here is what I think of my local government. I have voted for none of these people. Here are my political viewpoints. And then seeing like 60 to 80 comments, often from people that according to the little ticker on my channel will say, because YouTube will say this in the studio app, has been subscribed for two years, has been subscribed for three years, has been a member for four years. So you've been watching my stuff for four years. You've been here for the ride and you'll still type that. And it reminds me of something that used to happen when I, was, uh, when I was a kid, when I was in junior high school. So I grew up, I was born in the 80s, I grew up in the 90s, and w again, like it or not, whatever, again, I'm not saying this is a good thing. But back then, again, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but it was socially acceptable to use the word faggot as an insult. Many people did this. There was no worry that you were going to get kicked out of school, or that if you heard that, that the entire society would disown you or anything. I'm not saying it's right, but many kids used to use the word faggot as an insult. You probably remember this if you're like in your late 30s, 40s, or something like that. And, well, and a lot of the times, teachers just looked the other way or just didn't pretend not to care because they wouldn't want to have to deal with the paperwork or whatever for writing up the student. But you get my point. People would do this all the time. And if your response was, well, no, actually, a faggot is, uh, is, would be a man that is sexually attracted to men. I'm sexually attracted to women. Actually, here's proof of it. I have a girlfriend. They, that would not fix it. They would still go, <laughs> faggot, and then they would punch you in the shoulder or push you into a locker or take your stuff or shit like that. You know, like they would pick. See, when somebody would call you a faggot, they were not doing it because they actually wanted to have an argument with you as to what your sexual preferences were. It was a way of othering you. I am the in-group, you are the out-group, and it was a way of expressing that. But it was also a way of expressing that I am like, I'm going to make fun of you, I'm going to fuck with you, I'm going to bully you, and so on and so forth. It had nothing to do with the sexual orientation of the person that was being called faggot. Whether or not they actually were homosexual had nothing to do with it. They were using it as an insult. And not saying it's right that they did that. Not saying you should do that. I'm just saying that that's what it was like if you went to a junior high school in the 90s and had to deal with bullies. And what I find with this is it's actually the adult version of that. Um, you know, when somebody says, 
liberal left his blue state to go ruin another state. Or like, you idiot. Or like, you need to learn what it's like in your area. You are the outsider. You are the newcomer. You are the liberal that needs to leave your ideology behind. And then I say, nobody that I voted for in New York City has won for 16 years. <laughs> of like, look, again, my political, like, you, 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 could, you could look up publicly to get an idea of what I think of my local governance. And then the response is actually, again, not only do they become more aggressive, but they wind up getting 100 upvotes, 200 upvotes, 300 upvotes, like dirty liberal leave your whatever behind. It finally clicked. This has nothing to do with my political viewpoints. This has nothing to do with me uh, clicking more with Thomas Sowell than with Robin DiAngelo. This has nothing to do with me taking a more freedom-oriented approach to like a Ron DeSantis approach to dealing with the economy via COVID than Andrew Cuomo. This has nothing to do with who I vote for and has nothing to do with who I am. It has everything to do with a particular group of people wanting to other somebody else. And here's the part that makes me really sad about all of this, is that, you know, for the past like 10 or 15 years that I had a clue what my, poli my, my political viewpoints were on a number of different topics, what makes me kind of sad about it is that when people would say that conservatives are hateful or bigoted, I would always push back against that if I was in a room with progressive people. And I'd say, yeah, you're talking about the worst, a small number of people. You're talking about a small subsection. You, you, again, you're not talking about people on a regular basis. You don't have people that go to, I don't know, Republican or Libertarian meetup groups that are saying, you know, uh, only whites need walk in or apply or whatever or anything like that. Like that, that, just, that just doesn't happen. And when you do see it happen, it happens in numbers that are so ridiculously, like, just asininely small. I would always push back. I would ask them to provide specific examples. I'd ask them to provide specific examples in their own life. And I would ask, suggest to them that calling half of the country X is wrong, particularly if your concern is bigotry. That's probably not something that you should be doing. And what makes me really, really sad about this entire thing is recognizing that for a there's that, like I, I hate to say it, but there's actually something to it. There's actually something to it. Like that particular side of the political spectrum, wanting to have an in-group and have an out-group and doing everything they can to enforce that. As I said, it has nothing to do with political viewpoints or opinions. I'm convinced of this at this point. And there's one thing that Bo of the Fifth Column used to say. I actually do listen to this stuff. I listen to Bo of the Fifth Column from time to time. I listen to Destiny from time to time. It's very important to not get stuck into an ideological rabbit hole and to understand what other people that think different than you think. And I appreciate being able to hear them. And Bo of the Fifth Column has this really good saying. And it's something like, you know, you should not be judged as a human being based on the latitude and longitude at the time of your birth. That's a low resolution way to value a person. And I, would, I agree. And one of the really interesting things here is... That when I see those comments, when I see somebody respond to that comment, where I actually say what it is that I believe in, and then it's like, douchebag liberal ruins his state, moves to another one with his voting patterns, and that comment gets two or three or 500 upvotes, is there's actually something to that. Like, Bo is correct that you should not judge somebody based on the latitude and longitude of their birth. But simultaneously, there are many conservatives appear to do that. I have the comment section to prove it. Can't make that up. So one of the things that I've learned over the past several weeks is it's really strange. It's a newfound respect for progressive and liberal people. More progressive and liberal people that I knew in New York City, they would dislike me for who I am. They would dislike me for what I think. They would dislike me for my philosophies and everything else. Conservatives don't seem to care what my philosophies are in many cases. Not all, to be clear, not all. I'm just talking about the majority of my comment section. I'm not implying that my comment section applies to everybody, but it most certainly applies to my comment section. They don't like, dislike me for what I think. They don't dislike me for who I am. They just dislike me for the fuck of othering somebody based on their latitude and their longitude at the time of their birth. Because you see, one of the things that uh, is scariest to me as our society continues moving towards this more divided path that it's on is th this people that are so ideologically possessed that facts fundamentally don't matter. It's not that I have, a, like, I, I have a different view or a different take on them. It's when like they just fundamentally don't matter. The amount of people that I have met in New York City that believe that Kyle Rittenhouse had shot black people was just... It stunned me. Like, it fucking stunned me how many people were just completely misinformed about that case. The people that I've heard say that Jacob Blake was dead. And again, there's just so many times where I've heard people say things that were just completely divorced from demonstrable reality. 
And again, when I read these comments, it's, it's kind of like the same idea. Like they are so mad. Like again, who I voted for, what I believe, all these things, they don't matter. It doesn't matter if it's demonstrably untrue. It's still rawr, 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 rawr. And I want you to think about this because the, 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 the fear appears to be people moving to my state and voting differently than me. Well, again, if you have somebody that is 90 to 95% ideologically aligned with you in many ways where there's a lot of overlap and you still hate them and you tell them how much they are the other person and they need to kiss the ring and suck your dick because you were there first or whatever. And uh, I want you to think about this. Are they more or less likely to listen to you? Are they more or less likely to vote like you? Are they more or less likely to be open to a message from the other side that calls you hateful? Truly something to think about because there are people that may be moving to your area that are not the type of people that read Thomas Soul books in the subway, that are not the type of people that may agree with you that you may have to be concerned with if it is that you want your state to stay the way that it is. But if people come to your area because they prefer the way things are and they already agree with you and you just literally take your pants down and take a shit on them, do you think that that is going to help you conserve things the way they are in your area? Probably not. You're very, very poor quality salesman for the ideology and the philosophy and the politics that you would like to stay in your particular area. And it's something that I think that people have to think about if they want their areas to actually maintain the uh, policies and thoughts and ideas and ideologies and philosophies that they have. Something to think about. Just something to think about. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I, um, again, I get, at this point in time, I do have two for-profit companies, two non-profit companies, and a full-time job. So it is going to be very, very difficult for me to try and schedule in there, ruining your red state with my liberal state politics and ideas. But, you know, I, got a, I actually got a notepad here. Got a notepad here. Got a pen. I'm going to start planning it. To start planning it. How about that? That's it for today. <laughs> As always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Again, as I said, whether you like it, whether you hate it, whether you want to tell me what a horrible person I am, it's all money. It's all money. Moving trucks aren't cheap. Moving trucks across the country are not cheap. So your hatred is strongly appreciated. See you next time.